morning, church. This is Pastor RJ. This is Pastor RJ. Okay? So, I'm good. I feel well. And I thank the Lord for this opportunity to give the daily devotional. You see, I miss this time. As we know, uh, uh, once merong fever, kailangan talaga mag-relax, no? And quarantine and all. Uh, so we just follow the protocol. And also, uh, we praise and thank the Lord na okay na tayo. Uh, part lang pala siya ng schedule ko once a year. So once a year, meron ako naka-schedule na lagnat at least tatlong araw yan. <laughs> so, so, after ng tat tatlong araw, okay na. Uh, hibernate lang. Kailangan mo lang magpahinga sa at least tatlong araw na oh, ano, relax lang talaga. So, I praise and thank the Lord sa wife ko na andyan to take care. Okay? Kain ako ng mga prutas. Pinupunasan ako. Ayan. So, binabantayan ako. So, praise the Lord. Kahit malayo ako sa pamilya ko, sa Davao, I have my wife who is my family. Okay? So, ngayon, ang devotional natin, daily devotional natin, is found in 1 John 5.4. Okay? NASB, New American Standard Bible. So, ang NASB is the closest to English translation na closest uh, uh, trans sa original text. Okay? So, sa mga Bible school students, ang gamit nilang Bible, NASB, New American Standard Version. Para sa scripture reading sa pulpit, NIV. Uh, yan. So, para ma uh, read readable and mabilis maintindihan. So, it is written, For whoever has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Okay? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that he that has overcome the world our faith. So, Christian couples face a struggle in today's world. It is so easy to conform to worldly standards that we lose our identity as Christians without realizing it. How can we overcome the world and present a positive image of Jesus Christ as individuals and couples? Okay, do you know what the word overcome actually means? To overcome as a Christian means to experience, experience continuous victory in the midst of an ongoing struggle. Okay? Overcome means continuous victory. In the midst of an ongoing struggle. Meaning, hindi siya one-time victory na nanalo ka isang beses, sunod-sunod, talo ka na. <laughs> Keep up ka na agad. So, hindi ganon. It's a continuous, stra continuous victory. Okay? So, be called an overcomer, kailangan meron kang i-overcome. <laughs> Mahirap naman tawagin kang overcomer. No? Ano na pagdaanan mo? Wala eh. Inayos ni Lord lahat ng daanan ko. Wala akong kairap-hirap ang buhay ko. E kung ganyan yung buhay mo, how can you call yourself an overcomer? A continuous victory over ongoing struggle. So we want to be called an overcomer. So we need also to have struggles to overcome. Okay? 
Mahirap man, pero kasama natin ang Diyos. Okay? So, in order to overcome struggles, you need courage. Okay? But how do we get it? Our courage comes from the fact that Jesus Christ overcame Satan, sin, death, all at once. Repeat, no? Tatlo ni, tatlong tinalo ni Lord. Sa kamatayan niya, tatlo ang natalo niya. Sin, Satan, and death. At, okay? So, the psalmist said, Be strong and let your heart take courage. Psalms 31.24 The courage to stand out in the crowd comes from the strength of Jesus Christ. So if you want to be winners, no? overcomers, ang kailangan natin pinakauna is the Lord. Kailangan natin to have that vision na si Lord po ang overcomer. Hindi po tayo kundi si Lord. So, tayo po ay kakapit lang po sa Kanya. Okay? So, if you want to be an overcomer, we need to have somebody who has already overcome. We cannot overcome on our own. Okay? Especially if we look at our lives and then we say, Nako Lord, kaya ko na to Lord. Wag, wag mo na akong tulungan, Lord. And if ganyan yung mindset natin, usually we end up frustrated kasi hindi pala natin kaya. Okay? So we need to have God in our lives. It's not like a crutch, no? Na saklay. Na sasabihin na, nang, sabi ng iba na pang mahina lang yung just just na yan. Malakas ako, hindi ko kailangan ng just. Hindi po. Hindi po to siya crutch. Hindi po to siya yung comfort for the mind. Hindi hindi po drugs si Lord. Okay? Na uh, you escape the reality. Sabi ni Karl Marx, opium of the masses yung religion na yan. Yan yung panira sa economic system natin. Yung kapitalism na yan, yung mga preacher ng kapitalist, yung mga pastor na nagpe-preach lang palagi. Nang kayo mahihirap, okay lang, tiis lang kayo. Pagdating nyo sa langit, mayaman kayo. Meron kayong mansion doon. You will walk with streets of gold. Kayo mayaman, pasalamat kayo na mayaman kayo. Imagine mo, ganun lang ang preaching ng mga pastor sa time niya. Sabi niya, hindi maganda yan. Okay? So, we need Si Jesus, hindi siya crutch, clutch, hindi natin siya crutches natin na siya yung saklay natin. Kundi he is a real person, totoo po siya nag-exist. Okay? Hindi siya wishful thinking, the imagination lang para makalimutan ang problema. No. He helps you overcome the problem. Because he himself overcome his predicaments during his lifetime. Okay? Dami pong in-overcome ni Jesus as human being. In-overcome niya po yung gutom. 40 days siyang hindi kumain. So, nakaaya po ni Jesus yun. Okay? Yung holiness niya, pagiging holy niya, tiniis niya yun na ma ma mapaligiran siya na makasalanan. Hindi niya kaya yun by himself. Pwede siya maging end up as Pharisees. wherein they avoid people kasi hindi nila kaya makita ang kasalanan ng mga tao at hindi nila kaya na ma-expose sa kasalanan ng mga tao. Okay? But what I'm trying to say is this. Si Jesus, constant communication sa Papa niya kasi yun yung source of strength niya to walk in this planet na full of sin. Okay? So, Jesus... Overcome it by focusing sa Father niya. So, tayo naman na nandito sa mundo, sometimes we are tempted to be like the world. Kung paano ang world thinking, world pattern, ginagaya natin. 
at God is telling us to focus kay Jesus. Okay? So be strong and let your heart take courage. Okay? So we don't rely on ourselves but we we rely on Jesus. Okay? Too many times we rely on our own resources in troubleshooting problem. So we need to focus. Hindi si Jesus yung emergency button sa building. Na pagka walang wala ka na, wala ka ng choice, si Jesus na yung pipindutin mo. Hindi ganun. He is the first solution of every problem. Okay? So pag walang wala na tayo, we right away go to neighbors, to people, na magparinig tayo here and there. It's not like that. You tell it to Jesus. And Jesus will give you wisdom. Okay? So, we grow in faith once we start doing this one. Now, we always come to Jesus when we have problems, when we have troubles, when we are happy, when we are sad, all kinds of emotion, when we are angry, we go to Jesus. Even sa couples, sa panahon ngayon na uso ang hiwalayan, eh, na yung changing partners, eh, is like changing damit, no? Ang bilis lang magpalit ng partner. Nobody wants to face pain. Nobody wants to face pain. Pag nasasaktan na, dahil naghiwalay, maghahanap ka agad ng iba. Ang tawag sa mga teenager, rebound. Panakit butas. Which is real. You don't want to feel pain when you're alone because you remember your memories. So you jump to one relationship right away without processing what needs to be learned from that relationship. When in fact, you need to grieve for that loss first. Iyakan mo muna ng iyakan. I-learn mo muna lahat ng dapat mong i-learn sa previous relationship na iyon. Kasi kung hindi mo gagawin yan, pag talon mo sa next relationship, I tell you, kung lahat, ano lahat ng ayaw mo sa previous relationship mo, sa ex mo, ipoproject mo yan sa bago mong karelasyon and kawawa naman yung karelasyon mo. Ang dami mong daladalang bagahe sa buhay, binubuhos mo sa kanya. Isang beses niya lang magawa sa'yo, tumabog ka na na parang vulkan kasi naalala mo na lahat ng ginawa sa'yo ng mga excess mo. That's why people today jumping from one relationship to another because they don't want to be sad. They don't want to process the pain that they are experiencing. When in fact, when you process it, it makes you better. Okay? You make it makes you more mature. Okay? So we as Christians, we are taught to process these kinds of things. Yung emotions natin. Yung love natin for the Lord. Okay? So, my, my prayer sa atin is even us, Christian couples, even if we struggle. I've been to many churches, no? Ten years na ako sa ministry. Since 18 years old ako. <laughs> Kasi first year college pa lang ako, nasa ministry na ako, nagawak ako ng isang simbahan, Sunday ministry. Ayan. So after noon, one year, napunta ako, naging youth pastor na. So after noon, hanggang sa matapos ako mag-college, na-intern na ako sa Tagaytay. After noon, napunta ako sa Baklaran. One year after sa Baklaran, napunta ako sa Community of Christ. Almost 2 to 3 years ako doon. After noon sa AFC. After noon, andito ako sa Mutual Homes. I have seen so many members in my ministry. I have seen all kinds of people. I have experienced the best and also, I, I can call it worse also. But it's all part of the ministry. I have seen excellent leaders. I have seen the problem of church. So I I cannot 
I can see what's going on based sa mga pinagdadaanan ko na simbahan. I have seen churches with healthy families. Healthy families ang mga members with complete and all. Makita mo rin yung church nila. Sobrang lago din. Sobrang grow din. Kasi it's composed of healthy people. Healthy yung upbringing nila. Maganda. They are blessed. Sa ganun na ano. I have also seen church Uh, with dysfunctional people and church din nila dysfunctional din because the church can only produce what kind of people they are so if the churches is full of dysfunctionals the church will also reflect it okay but if the church is full of uh, functional people no healthy people the church will also reflect it so in this Overcoming the world. It, our morality is degrading. Pababa ng pababa. Parang kanta ng spaghetti pababa. Pero tayo, as Christians, we are called to preserve the morality of the world. Kasi kung hindi natin ipopreserve ang morality sa mundo, what is your purpose then? Why do you exist? Just to enjoy your relationship with the Lord? Mm -mm. Kung gusto lang ni Lord, i-enjoy mo yung relationship mo sa Kanya, kunin ka na niya, sa langit ka na mag-enjoy. Iniwan ka pa niya dito sa lupa kasi you need to preserve the morality sa mundo. By being the light of the world, by being the salt of the earth, then you will be able to preserve. Si Abraham, nakipag-bargain kay Lord, wag mo ba sa akin ang Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, andun, kung merong 50 na tao na righteous, sabi niya, hindi ko wawa sa akin. Lord, kung merong 20, hindi ko wawa sa akin. Merong 10, hindi ko wawa sa akin. Huminto na siya doon eh. Hindi niya alam, bakit hindi wawa sa akin ni Lord? Kasi when there is a righteous person in the place, that place has a chance na magbago. Kasi that person can influence that people around him. Okay? That, so that place can be redeemable. Metro Manila has a chance before the big one to strike. Dami natin pinagdaanan nung ano, no? Pasok ng 2020, Vulcan, Bagyo, Baha, Pandemic. 2021, pinagpatuloy. 2022, papasok na naman tayo. We need to preserve the morality of Metro Manila. Kasi kung wala nang silbi ang mga Christian sa Metro Manila, anong gagawin ni Lord sa Metro Manila? Kahit mag-bargain pa tayo, wala na, wala na, wala nang salt and light eh. Okay? So we are the watchman of our neighbors. So, in our simple way, let us preserve morality starting sa mga anak natin. Starting sa family natin. That's the best thing na we can do in serving our Lord. Okay? This is my prayer and benediction sa bawat isa. Na in overcoming the world, let us not conform with the world. Na we copy their strategy. We don't copy them. Okay? We stick with the Word of God and execute the Word of God. Okay? Execute, execute, execute. Apply lang ng apply. Huwag mo masyado padamihin yung Word of God sa puso mo na hindi mo ina-apply kasi ang Word of God, pag hindi mo ina-apply, papatigasin yan puso mo. Magiging serial adulterer ka na. Parang wala lang sa'yo. You can go to church while committing adultery. Okay? That's why we need to soften our conscience once again. 
you need to awaken our conscience kahit, kasi kahit Christian tayo pwede natin patigasin yung konsensya natin and how? that is by hearing and obeying the Lord every word of God na napipreach sa atin we apply it okay, we take it like a precious gold that we keep it and we protect it and then we check this it the word of god okay not treat it like a garbage na wala lang tapon no the word of god is god's word galing sa bunganga ni lord yan okay And it will accomplish what is sent to accomplish. It will not return to him void. So kung sa'yo hindi ma-accomplish yan, sa iba i-accomplish yan. So nag-preach ang pastor, 100 nakinig, 99 ayaw makinig, isa lang ang nakinig, o siya lang ang makikinabang sa preaching na yun. Kasi i-apply niya. The rest, same. Okay? So for whatever the, whatever is born of God, overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith so let us show our faith by trusting the lord in this area the lord bless you the lord bless us all god bless us all let us pray our father we thank you for this time that once again we can study your word we can listen to you we can apply Your word, Lord. Your word, Lord, is uh, too sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces through our soul and body, Lord God. So we pray, Lord, that it cuts both to wound and to heal. It will wound us first, Lord. It will open some wound first and then it will heal. So Lord, help us, Lord, to accept the Word of God and not choose words that only fits our our ideology, our lifestyle. Help us, Lord, to accept the Word of God as it is. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. The Lord bless us, church. God bless.